It's time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Eastside Reviews, your home for movie, TV, and wrestling reviews. We have now reached the release, the much anticipated release of the latest entry in the thematic catalog of The Dark Knight. We have The Batman from 2022. This movie had went through a few different um, development issues. Um, initially, Ben Affleck was going to direct this movie and star in it as Batman uh, as well. Um, when he was initially cast back in 2013 for BBS, but unfortunately things happened and the collapse of the Snyderverse, uh, we all know how that's been documented. And so there needed to be a new direction, a new change. And it was decided to make a movie focused on a younger Batman. And we were going to have a new director. Oof. Yep, a new director. And so it was in the hands of Matt Reeves, who most recently directed a pair of fantastic movies in the Planet of the Apes franchise. Um, excellent movies with great character development, great depth, um, amazing action. Uh, just again, 10 out of 10 movies for both of his entries into the Apes franchise. But now he is taking on perhaps the most famous and the most profitable comic book character there is with the Batman. And again, we have a younger Batman. We have a more fresh out the game, fresh in the game uh, version of the Batman in this one. And let me just give you my initial thoughts. I'm not going to wait till the end to give you my initial, my uh, ranking of the movie or like rating of the movie. I would give this movie a solid eight out of 10. I think for what this movie advertised itself to be, what we were told this movie will be, and especially for the people behind it, I think this is a really good foundation and a really good start for a new trilogy of Batman movies. Um, we've been told this is going to be the most detective focused Batman ever, and it really is. This is more of a detective movie, uh, kind of a thriller movie in the vein of Zodiac or Seven than it is a typical action movie. And I think it's going to be interesting to see one, how this movie does with audiences and two, how the box office does. In the theater that I was in, the people around me, they were engaged, they were enjoying it. And there were quite a few kids in the audience. And I think kids are going to be maybe tricky with uh, something like this. It is probably the darkest and the most disturbing Batman that we've had so far, because there is some brutal shit that goes down in this movie, especially with the main villain of the Riddler. and. I'm not sure how long term that's going to play with the kids, but for the showing that I was in, they seem to be engaged and they seem to be enjoying the movie. And yeah, I'm I'm thoroughly impressed with what this movie did. I think the music and the cinematography of this movie was really done well. Um, I want I believe the gentleman's name is Michael Ianchino, who did the music for this movie, and it is. It's amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. Michael Gian, Michael Gianchino. Got to give uh, the brother his credit. But yeah, it is. It's really well done with the writing, with the portrayals of the characters. I think it's really well done. It's not my favorite Batman movie, and there are some kind of issues with the movie. But I do think overall it is a really solid entry into the Bat mythos. So... The story of this movie, it is centering around the a new serial killer, a new kind of terrorist in Gotham. It is the Riddler, who is portrayed by uh, by Paul Dano in this movie. The Riddler is very disturbed and you can't it's really unfair to compare this with the Jim Carrey performance from uh, from Batman Forever. I. I can tolerate Jim Carrey's performance, and I do think there is a lot of good that he does. There is a lot of humor and a lot of kind of fun campiness that he brings to the movie. But this is just, it's it hits a little bit different with the Riddler. And we do get some of that kind of, some humor with the character and some humor with the Riddler towards the end of the movie, especially after he's caught and after he's taken off his mask, he kind of just, he kind of spazzes out a little bit and it, it's fun to watch. And Paul Dano does a really good job as the main bad guy. Um, he is, again, he's very disturbing with what he does. There is 
a lot of brutality, especially in the opening sequence. It is, it's almost out of a horror movie with what happens in the beginning with both the Riddler and with Batman. And Paul Dano does an excellent job as the Riddler, very solid entry as a villain. Um, let's get to the man himself, Robert Pattinson, uh, AKA Edward from Twilight, which I think is, it's kind of stupid that people are still harping on like, oh, he was the star of Twilight. And it's like, dog, that movie was, like those movies are, are like over a decade old. And both he and Kristen Stewart have both gone on to do different work and I've gotten a lot of critical praise for the movies that they've been in. So the Twilight Batman stuff, that should be fully put to rest. I think Pattinson does a really, he, he does a solid job in this first entry. Um, I don't think he's as solid as Christian Bale was in his first entry as Batman in Batman Begins. And this this movie's really gonna get some kind of comparisons to the Nolan trilogy. And I think that's kind of what I um what what they're aiming for with the movies overall. I think that's kind of their goal to do a trilogy that can be seen as on the level or even above what Nolan did. But I do think that Robert Pattinson will become an even better Batman and Bruce Wayne. In this movie, he is Batman pretty much all the time. He's minimally Bruce Wayne. And I wish I could give credit because I saw this on a comment of a review and they got it from another review. So it's it's already six degrees of separation from the original. But um, in this movie, it's Batman learning to be Bruce Wayne. And I think even with Michael Keaton, who was a weirdo Bruce Wayne, Batman type of dude, he's still kind of new to be Bruce Wayne when the public needed. He still knew to put on the airs, put on the face of Bruce Wayne when it was needed. And this one, he doesn't. He shows up like, and it's a really big deal when he shows up in public because that's not what this Batman does. That's not what this Bruce does. He is just not in public at all. and. Alfred is questioning that. Uh, Alfred played by Andy Serkis, who I think does a solid job. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of the dynamic between Pattinson and Serkis get developed and explored in future movies. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, but, but yeah, but Pattinson does a, a really solid job as Batman. Um, he has some of that emo moodiness from Twilight and it works in this, it, it really does work in this case. And so I know I said, put the Twilight Batman stuff kind of to rest, but there's some good to that. And I do think he does a good job with the moodiness of who Batman is. And I think for the first time since Keaton, we get a Batman who, who is really a weirdo. And look, Batman is my favorite uh, DC character. He is my favorite individual superhero from DC, but <clears throat> excuse me let's be honest batman would be kind of a weird dude and i think that this is the first batman in a long time that is just oh this dude is weird enough yeah i, I can buy him being a dude to dress up as a bat go out at night and beat up criminals like i can for sure buy that with this batman because he is kind of a weirdo in in the best possible ways i think Pattinson sells being kind of the tortured, disturbed Batman really well. But we also get those glimpses of hope, the glimpses of the person that he could be. And I think that plays well into the movie. And it really does lay a solid foundation for his growth throughout these next few movies and hopefully more. I think for sure we're getting a trilogy. Um, we're getting some spinoff stuff from this. But I do think we're going to see him mature and grow as time goes on. But Pattinson, for a first outing, this was really good. Um, another big addition is Jeffrey Wright as, commis as not commissioner, but as Jim Gordon, uh, one of the leading detectives of the GCPD. Um, he brings some actual fun humor to this. He is, he's kind of like um, Danny Glover in and Lethal Weapon, kind of that I'm getting too old for this shit type of detective. And it works well with his dynamic with Batman. Like Jeffrey Wright is legitimately funny in this movie with just his mannerisms, with the way that he goes about things, with just his mood towards Batman. <coughs> Excuse me. He's really good in this movie. And I appreciate him. Like again, Jeffrey Wright is a fantastic actor and he 
he makes Commissioner Gordon his own. You're not going to see him. I don't think you're going to get many comparisons between him and Gary Oldman. I think they're both good versions of Gordon in their own ways. And again, I want to see more from Jeffrey Wright. Zoe Kravitz damn near steals the show in this movie as Catwoman, as Selena Kyle. Um, she brings a lot of energy. She brings some tragedy to the role with um, some revelations that we find out. And she is just amazing for the entire time that she is on screen. She is now the third black actress to portray Catwoman. Uh, first Eartha Kitt in the uh, Adam West Batman series. Halle Berry in the shitty ass 2004 uh, Catwoman movie, and now Zoe Kravitz is portraying her on this in, in this role, and she really does a great job at being both Catwoman and Selena Kyle. Um, Anne Hathaway was uh, Selena Kyle in The Dark Knight Rises. She had a little bit of Catwomanness to her with the feminine wiles, kind of the femme fatale stuff, but I don't think she fully embraced it like uh michelle pfeiffer and this is prop this is the most comic accurate version of catwoman that we've seen on screen in fact that's with the most with this movie there is a lot of nods and homages to a lot of stuff in batman history there's some hush uh, there's some hush elements to this there's some batman year one elements there's some um telltale batman to this there's a little bit of uh nolan a little bit of burden a little bit of um a little, little bit of snyder with some of the with some of the action like it really is a collage of everything that we've seen before with batman and matt reeves and the crew they're able to make it unique and they're able to make it on to, to make it their own uh john Turturro is carmine falcone in this movie um tim uh Tim Wilkinson or Tom Wilkinson, I, I apologize for getting his name wrong. He portrayed uh, Carmine in uh, Batman Begins. Both are really solid and they both do a really good job of being different kinds of intimidating and different kinds of mob bosses. Like Tom Wilkinson's Carmine Falcone, especially that fear speech that he gives Bruce in the bar, excellent stuff. And I think John Turturro, he does a serviceable job in that role in this movie. And the main, uh, the other main villain in this movie is Colin Farrell as Oswald Cobblepot, AKA the Penguin. And along with Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell is just hilarious and great whenever he is on screen. Um, he just has that, like he has like an old school, like if you've seen like the Sopranos, it's basically like he could have been a character on the Sopranos. Like Oz could have been right alongside Pauly Walnuts and Silvio and Big Pussy and Tony. He could have been right in right in that little crew. He was he was great in this movie. Take it easy, sweetheart. Like you could tell he was having fun with his role. And it's a little, he was a little unrecognizable as Colin Farrell. You could see it a little bit as the movie went on, but man, he is excellent in this movie. And again, another great job. All of the cast, I think, do a great job with their roles and they each make the characters their own. Uh, Zoe Kravitz isn't Michelle Pfeiffer. She isn't Anne Hathaway. She isn't Allie Berry. She is herself as Catwoman. And Robert Pattinson is himself as Batman. Andy Serkis is really good as um, as Alfred. He is an Alfred that for sure was a hitter back in the day. Like all of the Alfreds have had like little allusions to them having some type of military service, having some type of experience in combat. This is the first Alfred was like, oh no, that dude he 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 he's got some bodies on his resume, and I think Alfred was he was he was a really good job and. Yeah, like I said, the homages to different stories that we've seen from Batman, um, the Telltale Batman games, some of my favorite, those are hinted at. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot. This is really a love letter to the detective aspect of Batman. And I think for what this movie is and for what the movie marketed itself to be a true detective story, it is a really solid job. The action that is in this movie, and there is some action that is great, it it works really well. Um, for me, the opening train scene, it's brutal and it's just, it is a good establishing like, nah, this, man, this Batman can kick your ass. Um, the 
club scene was really fun like there's a lot of good action in this the batmobile chase is probably my favorite and probably the best done batmobile chase that we've seen on film the batmobile itself it is simply a muscle car with a jet engine in, ugh, bit my tongue <laughs> it's a muscle car with a jet engine on it and it kicks all the ass it is a dope car like you don't need it, it proves that you don't need to have the bat the, the Batmobile be a tank and have like rocket launchers and guns on it. It is just a charged up, souped up muscle car that will whoop your ass. It is, the chase is really fun and the hunt, it's that hunt for Penguin, it, it's fun. Really fun chase scene and the movie has humor that works. It's a lot of black humor, but it's humor nonetheless that does work. One of the negatives that I feel for the movie is the runtime. Now, if you guys have been watching any of my videos, you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of the long runtimes. I think once a movie gets past two hours, it really gets tough to keep the audience engaged in a lot of these movies and to pay attention. Like there's some with some of these movies, it's like you can pare some stuff down. For this one, it is three hours in length. And I do think like, the movie does, there are like 10 minutes that I would say feel slow, but it helps with the overall story. But you do, especially towards the climax, you do feel the length of time. And the climax itself, it's good. It's not my favorite Batman climax. It's another, it's solid and it's really well done and well shot. And it leads into a pretty good ending few scenes, but uh, it, it's just, like, eh, it, it just doesn't quite hit as hard. And we do get some sequel baiting with um, with Riddler in jail. And uh, this is a spoiler warning. So please, you know, just cover your ears. I'll wave my hands like this when we're done talking to spoilers. So spoiler talk in three, two, one. The Joker is going to be in one of these upcoming movies, and I'm conflicted on how I feel about that. Um, old dude who played Druig in The Eternals is going to be Joker. And yeah, I don't, I think we can go, go a trilogy without the Joker. Like, um, like Batman has so many great villains that aren't used too much. Like we, we could get a Scarecrow movie where he's the main antagonist, Mr. Freeze black mask like there's like professor pig especially with this batman professor pig could be a thing that exists if you want to just go straight balls to the wall horror and it's just like why are like we don't have to have joker again like joker again come on man <sighs> but you know joker is the most profitable and the most famous of batman's villains and i think the dude who is going to be joker is a good actor so the performance i'm not worried about it's just i really wish we got other villains hopefully we'll get more of a spotlight on these villains when we get to the uh spinoff arkham series that we have but yeah but yeah joker's gonna be making his return and uh, Oh, knock the mic over and spoiler talk is over. As for, you know, again, overall rating of the movie, I would say it's a solid 8 out of 10. Good start to a trilogy. Uh, the movie looks like it's doing pretty well at the box office, so we're for sure going to get more. Um, and I do recognize that this might not be for everybody. I think one thing that we kind of need to accept with these superhero movies and how they're coming out is that not everything is going to be for everybody like not everything appeals to all tastes i think that um if you compare this to the last big superhero movie that was released which was no way home i think no way home in theater experience was a lot more fun because there were a lot more well-known callbacks you know meme acknowledgement with the uh you know i'm something of a scientist myself line but I think this movie is going to take and I think you're going to appreciate it more on a second viewing. Um, I plan on catching it again sometime later this month when things chill a little bit. Uh, I don't want to keep going out to the theaters and risk getting that vid. But yeah, um, I think this movie, again, on first viewing, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was solid. And I think on second viewing, I'll probably pick on 
pick up uh, some more appreciation for it. And I think that might be the case with a lot of people, but it it's not going to appeal to everybody. Like, it's not going to appeal to all taste. And that doesn't mean the movie's bad. And that doesn't mean, like, the person who the movie doesn't appeal to is bad. Like, it just means that it's not for you. Not everybody likes the same flavor of ice cream. Like, some people like coffee-flavored ice cream. Some people like uh, vanilla bean ice cream. Some people like Rocky Road ice cream. And then there's those weird people who love mint chip ice cream. Like, you know, it, it's just, it is what it is. Like, it's not going to appeal to everybody but I did really enjoy the movie and I am looking forward to seeing more from Matt Reeves and what he has to offer for the Batman. So yeah, solid eight out of 10. Definitely check it out if the movie does appeal to you. That's gonna do it for this review. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you are taking care of yourselves and I hope you're treating each other well. Make sure you stay tuned to the channel because coming up in the next few days, I am going to be doing a ranking of all of the theatrically released Batman movies, say for the 1966 one. Um, I wanna do that separately and kind of push it away. I think the Adam West stuff needs to be dissected on its own. And I'm also going to be giving a review and giving a ranking of all the live action uh, people who have portrayed Batman, including Adam West. I'll touch on him a little bit, you know, just out of respect, but it's mostly going to be focusing on everyone from Keaton up to Pattinson. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm also going to be dropping some WrestleMania reviews later in the month for WrestleMania's 19 and 25 in anticipation of the big show coming up at the beginning of April. And, you know, check out all my other old content. If you love Batman movies, I have a whole playlist that I'm going to leave at the end of the video. Um, if you love Marvel movies, um, if you love Disney movies, you know, if you love movies and TV shows in general, hey, I've got all sorts of stuff and you can find that on the channel. But till next time, make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you are uh, drinking plenty of water and I will see you guys next time for more reviews. Peace. Bye.